Hi everyone, welcome to Go Classes. In this lecture, we will study the concept of interrupts. Also, we will study the interrupt processing. So, in the previous lecture, we have already seen interrupt-driven I/O data transfer. Okay. In the previous lecture, our focus was on data transfer. Basically, we want to transfer data from I/O device to memory or from main memory to I/O device. So, for data transfer between I/O devices and main memory, we have seen the interrupt mechanism. How we can use the interrupt to do the data transfer between I/O devices and main memory. This is what we have seen in the previous lecture. Like, but but I told you that interrupt, that is a general concept. See, in the previous lecture, our focus was only on the data trans transfer. Basically, we wanted to do data transfer between IO device and main memory. So for that, we have already seen the concept of interrupt. But I told you in the previous lecture that interrupts, these are general concept. Means you can use the concept of interrupt for data transfer. Also for many other things, you can use the interrupt. Okay, so you can see interrupts are general concept and they can be used for data transfer as well as for many other things. Okay, so in the previous lecture, we have seen how to use the interrupts for data transfer that we have already seen. So interrupt driven IO data transfer, this we have already seen in the previous lecture. Now in this lecture, we will study the concept of interrupt in general. Okay, so before we study the interrupt concept in general. Now let me do the recap of the previous lecture. Okay, so in the previous lecture, we have seen how to do IO data transfer using the interrupt mechanism. Okay, what we want to do, we want to transfer data between IO device and main memory. Means either we want to transfer data from IO device to main memory or from main memory to IO device. This is what we want to do using the mechanism of interrupt. Okay, I told you that in this interrupt driven IO data transfer, what happens when the IO device is making the data ready? See, when uh, when the data is being ready at that time cpu cpu can do some other work yes or no this we have seen so basically what will happen see if the cpu want to do some data transfer from io device to main memory or from main memory to io device then you can see that what cpu will do cpu will send a command to the io module okay now the io module what it will do it will collect the data from the io device okay so it will make the data ready Okay, uh, from the IO device. Now, when the data is being ready, when the data is being ready means from the IO device, the data is coming to IO module. When the data is being ready, during that time, CPU can do some other work. CPU can execute some other program. Yes or no? But remember, once the data is ready in the IO module, in the IO module, there is a data register. So in the data register of IO module, once the data is ready, Okay, once the data is ready for transfer, then the actual transfer will happen by the CPU only. Okay, the CPU will do the data transfer. What the CPU will do? CPU will load the data from IO module to CPU register, then, C then from the CPU register to main memory. So I told you that in this interrupt driven IO data transfer, what happens? Basically, for example, for example, what we, what we want to do, let's assume that we want to do data transfer from IO device to main memory. Okay, from IO device to main memory, Let's assume we want to do data transfer. Then I told you that when data is being ready at that time, CPU can do some other work. CPU can execute some other process. But remember, once the data is ready in the IO module, when the data is ready, then actually what will happen? The data transfer will be done by the CPU. Okay, the CPU will do the data transfer means the data will go to the CPU register from the IO module and from the CPU register to main memory. Okay, so this is how the data transfer will happen. So the actual data transfer will be done by the CPU only. Okay, is this clear? But remember when the data is being ready in the IO module means this IO module is collecting data from the IO device at that time during that time CPU can execute some other program CPU can do some other useful work. Okay, so this is the idea of interrupt driven IO data transfer. So let's see all the steps. Okay, so in this interrupt driven IO data transfer, let's assume I want to transfer some data from IO device to main memory. This is what I want to do. Then what are the steps? Okay, step by step, what will happen? So let me tell you quickly. So you can see the CPU will initiate the data transfer. Okay, what CPU will do? CPU want to transfer data from IO device to main memory. So what the CPU will do? CPU will send a command to the IO module. Yes or no? So you can see CPU will initiate the data transfer by issuing a read command to the IO module. Okay, now what the CPU will do? After sending the command to the IO module, now what the CPU will do? CPU will do some other work. Okay, now CPU will proceed to perform some other task means it will execute some other program. Okay, CPU will do some other useful work. Now, 
now what the io module will do io module when it will receive the read signal then io module what it, it will do it will collect the data from the io device so you can see the io module it will proceed to read the data from the associated peripheral peripheral means io device okay so io module will collect data from the io device now remember this is basically we are making the data ready okay from the io device data is going to the io module so basically we can say that io module is collecting the data during this time cpu is already performing some other program okay now once the data is ready in the io modules data register means in this module there is a data register there is a buffer now once the data is ready there okay means the io module is ready for data transfer then what this io module will do io module will send a interrupt request signal okay io module it will send interrupt signal or i can say interrupt request signal okay so very simple this io module it will send a interrupt signal to the processor to the cpu okay very simple on the control line basically this is a control signal this interrupt signal this is a control signal okay so this io module when the data is ready in the io module then this io module will send a interrupt signal to the processor very simple now what the next step now the next step is at the end of each instruction cycle notice one thing when the c let's assume this cpu is executing some program right cpu is already executing some program now let's assume cpu is executing this instruction okay let's call it instruction i6 okay now when this cpu is executing this instruction then you can notice during the execution of this instruction maybe the interrupt has come yes or no okay the io module is sharing is sending the interrupt signal okay the interrupt signal has come interrupt request interrupt request signal has come irq means interrupt request signal has come so io module is sending interrupt request signal you can see to the processor but remember processor is already executing some other program yes or no processor is executing some other program now let's assume when processor is executing this instruction i6 during the execution of this instruction i6 let's assume the interrupt signal has come now what the cpu will do remember cpu will at least finish this instruction yes or no okay cpu will at least finish this instruction okay so what the cpu will do cpu will finish this instruction and at the end of this instruction means after executing this instruction what the cpu will do cpu will check the interrupt line okay let me tell you that on the cpu this is the cpu on the cpu there is a pin there is a hardware pin okay there is a hardware pin there is a hardware pin this pin is basically this is your interrupt pin or i can say this is intr pin means this is your interrupt pin interrupt request pin okay so what the cpu will do after executing this instruction the cpu will check the interrupt pin and cpu will see okay there is a interrupt yes or no cpu will see that okay the io module has sent a interrupt now what the cpu will do now cpu will save this work whatever work cpu was doing this this program cpu was executing so cpu will save this program and then cpu will execute the data transfer yes or no so cpu will save this program and then cpu will do the data transfer means cpu will take the data from io module to cpu register and then from cpu register to the main memory okay yes or no so this is what the cpu will do this is what cpu will do so let's see you can easily see at the end of each instruction cycle means means after ending the current instruction what the cpu will do cpu will check for the interrupt okay on the interrupt pin there is a interrupt pin i told you there is a hardware pin so at the end of each instruction the processor will check is there any interrupt okay so processor will check for interrupt on the interrupt pin now when the interrupt is there on the interrupt pin when the interrupt from io module occurs now what the processor will do processor will save this work processor is executing some program so processor will save this program so you can see the processor will save the current work now what it means save the current work what it means it means the processor will save the registers the processor will save the program counter yes or no because after doing this data transfer the the processor should execute from here yes or no the processor should execute from this instruction so processor will save the program counter also also processor will save the registers which are used by this program okay so and also the processor will save the flag registers which are affected by this program basically the point is that when the cpu will do the data transfer after that cpu will come back to this program okay now when the cpu is coming back to this program then this program will execute from this point so we need to save the program counter yes or no also we need to save the registers which are used by this program okay also we need to save 
the flag registers which are affected by this program so basically these things we need to save so you can see that the processor will save the current work what it means it means it will save the current program context okay that means we will save program counter we will save processor register all these things we will save okay now after that we will process the interrupt process the interrupt what that means that means we will do the data transfer okay the processor will read the data from the IO module. Okay, so data will go from IO module to processor register and then from processor register to main memory. Okay, so this is what the CPU will do. Remember, this task CPU will do. So CPU will do the data transfer. Okay, now after the data transfer is over, now when this data transfer is over, then what the CPU will do? CPU will resume the execution of this program. So you can see it, after the data transfer is over, then CPU will restore the context of the program which it was executing. Yes or no? So it will resume the execution of that program. So very simple. These are the steps in interrupt driven IO data transfer. Okay. Now, did you notice one thing that when the IO module is collecting the data from the IO device during that time, the CPU is not idle. The CPU is doing some useful work. CPU is executing some other program. Okay. Now, when the interrupt will come, the IO module, when the data is ready, then IO module will send an interrupt on the interrupt pin. There is an interrupt pin on the CPU. So IO module will send an interrupt. Now the CPU, what it will do? It will execute the current instruction. Okay, the current instruction, it will execute. And after executing the current instruction, the CPU will check, is there any interrupt? Now, if there is any interrupt, then what the CPU will do? If there is interrupt, then what the CPU will do? CPU will save the program. Okay. Save, save the register, save the program counter. So CPU will save the program. Okay. The current work CPU will save and then CPU will go to the interrupt service. Okay. CPU will service the interrupt means CPU will do the data transfer. Okay. After doing, after servicing the interrupt, after completing the data transfer from IO device to main memory. Now what the CPU will do? CPU will resume the execution of the previous program. Okay, so very simple. These are the steps. So we have already seen all the steps which are, which are, uh, which will happen for I interrupt driven data transfer. This is what we have seen. Okay, so you can see this diagram that CPU will initiate the data transfer. Okay, the CPU is initiating the data transfer, then CPU will do some other work. Okay, so here remember the CPU here, the CPU is doing this CPU will initiate the data transfer. And then CPU will perform some other work. Okay. Now what this IO module will do when the data is ready in the IO module, then IO module will send an interrupt request. Okay. Now when the interrupt request will come to the CPU, then you can see what the CPU will do. CPU will save the current work. Okay. After saving the current work, CPU will do the data transfer. You can see, okay. You can see CPU will read uh, data from IO module. Then CPU will write the data in the main memory. So basically CPU will do the data transfer. Now what the CPU will check is the transfer complete. Okay. Means did we send, did we transfer whole data? Okay. Then if the transfer is complete, then it is good. If the transfer is not complete, then what the CPU will do? Okay. Let's assume transfer is not complete means one chunk of data we have transferred, but maybe, maybe more chunks are remaining. Yes or no. For example, maybe one byte we have transferred, but maybe more bytes are remaining. Yes or no. So you can see if the transfer is not complete means some more data we need to transfer some more data. We have already transferred some data, but some more data we need to transfer. Then you can see what the CPU will do again. The CPU will resume the execution of some other program. Okay. CPU will do some other program and CPU will wait for another interrupt. Okay. Is this clear? So very simple that if the data transfer is not complete already CPU has done some data transfer CPU has already done some data transfer but maybe some more data transfer is pending okay now in this situation what the CPU will do CPU will perform some other task CPU will do some other task okay now again CPU will wait for interrupt okay is this clear so again what the IO module will do again IO module will send interrupt and then again the CPU will do the data transfer then again, CPU will check, did I complete the data transfer? If the data transfer is complete, then it is good. If the data transfer is not complete, means maybe there is some more data that we need to transfer. Okay. Maybe there is some more data. Then what the CPU will do again, CPU will perform some task. Okay. CPU will execute some program and CPU will wait for another interrupt signal. Another interrupt signal means more data transfer. Yes or no? So very simple. And again, CPU will wait for interrupt signal. Now when the interrupt signal will come, then CPU will do the data transfer and so on. So this is the way. Okay. I hope you understood. Is this clear? Please tell me. So very simple. Now let's move on. Now let me tell you that when the interrupt has come, 
okay please focus on this point when the interrupt request has come means cpu is finding that okay interrupt has come now when the interrupt has come then what the cpu will do cpu will save the work yes or no whatever work cpu is doing cpu will save the work but you can see when the interrupt has come then cpu will save the work after that cpu will service the interrupt yes or no now in this example when i say service the interrupt then what cpu is doing see when the interrupt is coming to the cpu then what the cpu will do cpu will save the current work after saving the current work cpu will service the interrupt okay cpu will service this interrupt now when i say service this interrupt then here in this example what cpu is doing cpu is doing the data transfer yes or no in this example cpu is doing the data transfer to service the interrupt so let me tell you that when the interrupt request has come now this task that cpu is doing now this task that cpu is doing after the interrupt request has come okay this interrupt request has come now this task that cpu is doing this is called handling interrupt or i can say this is called interrupt handler this is called interrupt handler is this clear basically we are servicing the interrupt okay the cpu is servicing the interrupt because the interrupt has come now cpu is servicing the interrupt okay so you can see the interrupt has come for data transfer yes or no okay in this case the interrupt has come for data transfer the io module is saying that cpu please do the data transfer so interrupt has come for data transfer so the cpu will do the data transfer very simple so you can see when the interrupt request has come now this task now this work that cpu is doing to service the interrupt that is called interrupt handler this is also called interrupt service routine this is also called interrupt service subroutine so these are different different names for interrupt handler again i am telling you when the interrupt request has come now what the cpu will do cpu will save the work it is doing and then cpu will service the interrupt whatever interrupt has come cpu will service the interrupt in this case the interrupt has come for data transfer the io module is saying cpu please do the data transfer data is ready okay the io module io module is saying that cpu data is ready now please do the data transfer then what the cpu will do cpu will do the data transfer so this is called interrupt service we are servicing the interrupt okay or this code i can say this program is called interrupt handler or we can call it interrupt service routine interrupt service routine or we can call it interrupt service subroutine these are different different names for the same thing okay we will again see this don't worry we will revisit this basically this part of the program you can see this part of the program which gets activated when a interrupt request comes this part of the program is called interrupt service routine isr or interrupt handler basically here we are servicing the interrupt okay now don't worry i will come back to this interrupt handler this isr what is this what it means i will again explain this don't worry about it okay but let's move on now so this is what we have seen in the previous lecture whatever i told you so far this is what we have studied in the previous lecture interrupt driven io data transfer where our purpose is only data transfer between io io device and main memory okay but i told you i told you that interrupts are general concept okay other than data transfer we can use interrupts for many other things okay so now we will study the interrupt concept in general okay so let me tell you what we will study in this chapter these are the concepts one by one we will study in this chapter first we will see the definition of interrupt what this interrupt means okay so the definition of interrupt then we will see what is interrupt service routine then we will see what is interrupt vector and interrupt vector table then we will study interrupt cycle then we will study interrupt process interrupt processing sequence then we will study how to handle multiple interrupts okay how to handle multiple interrupts that uh, occur simultaneously and we will see the concept of daisy chaining also we will study nested interrupts and at the end we will study types of interrupts so this is what we are going to study in this chapter okay so let's start with the interrupt definition so let's see the definition of interrupt so what is a interrupt see interrupt is a very intuitive concept okay let's assume i am teaching and in the offline classroom let's assume a teacher is teaching and let's assume uh, suddenly some student is interrupting suddenly some student is asking a doubt then we can call it interrupt yes or no that this student is interrupting yes or no so you can see this interrupt this word we use in our in our real life many times in your daily life you use this word interrupt okay basically what this interrupt word means that we are doing something and then suddenly some interrupt comes 
ओके बेसिकली समवन नीड्स आवर अटेंशन ये सोनो वी आर डूइंग सम वर्क एंड सम डिवाइस सम इवेंट नीड्स आवर अटेंशन सो दैट डिवाइस और दैट इवेंट कैन सेंड अ इंटरप्ट सिग्नल ओके सो वेरी सिंपल दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ इंटरप्ट द इंटरप्ट दे अलाउ आई ओ डिवाइसेज टू सेंड सिग्नल टू द प्रोसेसर दैट दे रिक्वायर अटेंशन बेसिकली ऑल द आईओ डिवाइसेज लाइक योर माउस योर की बोर्ड ओके योर हार्ड ड्राइव okay all these io devices that we have so remember these io devices also the software okay remember the hardware as well as the software so they can send signal to the processor they can send signal to the processor that they require attention this signal is called interrupt signal okay so for example if the keyboard needs attention of the cpu or the mouse or the hard drive needs attention of the cpu okay for some work maybe for data transfer okay maybe uh, to maybe to give some information or for example in your in your laptop there is a battery yes or no if battery is low if battery is very low and your laptop is about to shut down then what will happen when your computer when your laptop battery is very low okay and your laptop is about to shut down then the battery controller okay the battery is io device yes or no battery is a input output device now this battery this battery has a battery controller Yes or no? Battery interface. Now this battery interface, what it will do? It will send an interrupt signal to the CPU that computer is about to shut down. So take some action. So this information we are giving to the CPU that computer laptop is about to shut down. So take some action, whatever action you want to take. Maybe save some work, whatever work is pending. So maybe you can save it because laptop is about to shut down. So this is what I am saying that interrupt is a concept. Remember, I can say interrupt is a signal. Okay, which allow the io devices hardware as well as software remember which allow io devices to send signal to the cpu that they require attention okay so remember interrupt is a signal it is a control signal it is a signal which is sent to processor to indicate that some event or some io device needs immediate attention okay so remember the io device peripheral means io device so the io device literally can interrupt the processor when it needs cpu attention okay is this point clear what is interrupt the concept of interrupt the definition of interrupt did you understand so remember in our computer there are many io devices we have hardware we have software so whenever some event or some io device needs cpu attention okay then they can send a interrupt signal to the cpu okay that i need your attention okay now remember this attention this can be for data transfer maybe maybe for data transfer or maybe as i told you that battery interface okay battery controller can send interrupt signal to the cpu that uh, laptop is about to shut down so take some action okay so basically the io device or the event or the software hardware or software can send information also to the cpu with the help of this interrupt signal so remember this interrupt is a signal which is sent to the processor to indicate that some event needs your immediate attention i hope this point is clear okay the definition of interrupt is that clear to everyone so let's see one classroom analogy to understand the concept of interrupt now in the classroom let's assume that teacher is the cpu okay teacher teacher is the cpu and let's assume what are the students teacher is the cpu and what are the students these are the io devices okay there are many students so they are the io devices okay this is a perfect example because in a classroom there is one teacher so there is one cpu but there are many students so means there are many io devices okay now remember when teacher is explaining some concept let's assume this is your cpu cpu means teacher now when teacher is explaining some concept then what the student can do what the io device can do they can raise their hand yes or no maybe some student want to ask some doubt then what the student can do the student can raise the hand now this raising hand this is called interrupt request yes or no is this clear so remember when the teacher is explaining some concept then the student what the student can do student can raise hand okay now this student needs attention basically a student want to ask some doubt so a student needs attention of the teacher okay so a student is raising hand raising hand simply means that that is interrupt request okay now what the teacher will do now the teacher now the teacher will save the work whatever concept teacher was explaining teacher will uh, temporarily okay for a moment teacher will suspend it or i can say stop it okay so basically it will save the work and then teacher will Uh, teacher will what it, the teacher will do teacher will answer the doubt of the student yes or no so basically teacher is servicing the interrupt 
okay the interrupt is coming from the student okay so teacher what is he doing it is servicing the interrupt servicing the interrupt means teacher is answering the doubt of the student whatever doubt a student is asking so teacher will answer the doubt that okay this is the answer of your doubt okay after answering the doubt what the cpu will do when the doubt is clear then what the cpu will do cpu will resume the execution yes or no cpu will resume the execution the teacher will resume the concept very simple so this is the analogy of interrupt okay now let me tell you this this analogy okay let me give you some more details so that we can explain we can understand the concept of isr interrupt service routine that also we can understand so again remember cpu is the teacher yes or no correct cpu is a teacher now let's assume cpu is executing some program cpu is doing some work or i can say teacher is teaching some concept so cpu is executing some program for example instruction i1 instruction i2 and so on cpu is doing some work okay let's assume that when cpu is executing i6 during this instruction execution what happens let's assume some student is raising hand okay when cpu is executing this instruction i6 at that point at that point at that point what happens that some student let's assume there is a student y okay student y so let's assume there is a student y means io device y when i say student y that means io device y for example keyboard or maybe mouse so a student y what it will do a student y raises hand correct okay maybe to ask some doubt okay yes or no to ask some doubt to ask some doubt okay so tell me in the in the computer terminology what we will call it a student y is raising hand raising hand in the computer terminology what we will call it raising hand simply means interrupt request yes or no so basically io device y simply it means io device y sends interrupt signal interrupt request signal interrupt request signal that i need your attention interrupt request signal to the cpu okay to cpu okay is this clear very simple so io device y that is sending interrupt signal interrupt request signal to the cpu now what the cpu is going to do tell me the cpu will execute this instruction i6 okay remember the cpu will execute this instruction i6 it will not happen that cpu is uh, is not executing means uh, half executing i6 and then it is uh, answering the doubt no what the cpu will do or i can say what the teacher will do teacher will at least write this complete statement you can understand like this that teacher is writing some statement then teacher will at least write this complete statement after writing this complete statement what the teacher will see the teacher will see that student y is raising hand means the teacher will see that there is a interrupt from io device y okay is this clear so remember when this instruction is over when this instruction is complete now this cpu will check is there any interrupt is there any student who is asking doubt who is raising hand to ask doubt then cpu will find okay yes there is io device y which is which has sent interrupt request signal now what the cpu is going to do cpu will stop this work okay or i can say cpu will save this work because again cpu will have to resume it so cpu will save this work whatever work cpu is doing cpu will save it and then cpu what it will do cpu will go cpu will go and cpu will answer the doubt basically cpu will service the interrupt this interrupt that has come cpu will service it means cpu is asking uh, cpu is answering the doubt of student y okay remember basically teacher is answering the doubt of student y that this is the answer okay this is the answer of student y doubt okay so what is this tell me what is this this is the answer this is the answer of student y doubt okay student y's doubt student y is doubt is this clear so very simple the teacher what it will do it will after executing the complete this current instruction after this is over the C, the cpu or i can say the teacher it will answer the student why student wise doubt okay so that this is the answer okay this is the answer for your doubt is this clear now once this and uh, the doubt is answered okay once the teacher has answered the doubt now what the teacher will again do tell me what the teacher will do teacher will resume the i7 yes or no is this clear teacher will resume the instruction execution teacher will go to the i7 and teacher will teacher will basically cpu will resume the execution is this point clear please tell me okay now let me tell you this doubt which is answered by the cpu or i can say this is the answer for student wise doubt basically what what we can say we can say that this cpu has serviced the interrupt 
ओके देर वॉज अ इंटरप्ट फ्रॉम आईओ डिवाइस वाई नाउ सीपीयू वॉट इज इट हैज डन इट हैज सर्विस्ड इट हैज सर्विस द इंटरप्ट ओके सो दैट इज द रीजन दिस दिस थिंग दैट सीपीयू इज डूइंग सीपीयू इज डूइंग समथिंग यस ऑनो दिस थिंग दैट सीपीयू इज डूइंग टू सर्विस द इंटरप्ट दिस प्रोग्राम दैट सीपीयू इज एग्जीक्यूटिंग टू सर्विस द इंटरप्ट दिस इज कॉल्ड आईएसआर दिस इज कॉल्ड आईएसआर ऑफ डिवाइस वाई ऑफ वाइज इंटरप्ट ऑफ डिवाइस वाइज इंटरप्ट ओके इज दिस इज दिस पॉइंट क्लियर प्लीज टेल मी सी student this io device y this io device y is sending interrupt signal so cpu needs to service the interrupt okay why the interrupt has come what is uh, what i need to do so cpu need to do something now whatever cpu will do to service the interrupt this is called isr of wise interrupt this is called interrupt handler or you can call it interrupt service routine okay is this point clear so remember isr that is also called interrupt handler okay so let me quickly tell you here that isr what that is called isr is also called isr that is called interrupt service routine it is also called interrupt handler it is also called interrupt service subroutine you can also call it iss all these are same same name uh, basically different names for the same thing okay i hope this point is clear let me know so very simple so in this analogy you can notice cpu is the teacher io devices are the students raising hand what that means that means sending interrupt request signal okay and when the when the teacher is answering doubt this answer of a student why is doubt that is basically interrupt handler or i can say interrupt service routine for device wise interrupt okay basically when the interrupt will come then cpu needs to do something to service the interrupt yes or no to service the interrupt cpu need to do something now whatever cpu is doing to service the interrupt that is called this program is called interrupt handler or this program is called interrupt service routine isr i hope this point is clear now tell me one thing let's assume different students are asking doubts then the answer of different students doubts will it be same just tell me this point let's assume some student is asking doubt for example let's assume nishant is asking doubt sayantan is asking doubt okay Dif let's assume different different students they are asking doubt will the answer for their doubts be same tell me the answer for different students doubts will that be same that will be different yes or no so similarly rem remember if so similarly remember if for example io device let's assume there is a io device y let's assume there is a io device y now if this io device y is sending interrupt okay this io device y this is sending interrupt then cpu what it need to do cpu need to do some work to service the interrupt now cpu will do some something cpu will execute this program to service the interrupt of io device y so remember this program will be called io device wise interrupt service routine okay is this clear so basically this will be called this program what this program will be called this program will be called isr4 this program will be called isr4 io device wise interrupt okay now remember for example this io device y maybe this is the keyboard or maybe this is the mouse means when mouse is interrupting then cpu need to do something that will be called isr for mouse interrupt okay similarly let, let's assume that keyboard is interrupting okay let's assume that keyboard is interrupting io device keyboard io device keyboard so let's assume that keyboard is sending a interrupt signal to the cpu now when the cpu will get the interrupt signal from the keyboard then again cpu need to do something to service the interrupt okay to service the interrupt whatever cpu will do cpu will execute a program to service the interrupt of keyboard yes or no interrupt is coming from keyboard so this cpu will execute some program to service the interrupt okay now this will be called isr interrupt service routine for keyboard okay is this clear so remember for different different io devices we have different different isr okay if interrupt if interrupt is coming from for example hard drive okay hard drive is sending some interrupt now what the what the cpu need to do cpu need to do some something cpu need to execute some program to service the interrupt of hard drive this will be called this will be called isr for for hard drive okay for hard drive interrupt so very simple point that when the interrupt will come to the cpu then cpu need to service this interrupt to service this interrupt whatever cpu will do whatever program cpu will execute this program is called interrupt service routine 
or you can say this is called interrupt handler okay and remember for different different io devices or i can say for different different interrupts we have different different isr okay if keyboard is sending interrupt then cpu will execute the isr for keyboard interrupt if mouse is sending interrupt then cpu will execute the isr for mouse interrupt okay so similarly if any io device is sending interrupt then cpu will execute the isr the interrupt service routine for that io device okay i hope this point is clear so let's move on so here you can see for example if a student y is asking a doubt a student v is asking a doubt a student p is asking a doubt then answer for these doubts will be different yes or no the answer for a student y doubt that will be different from answer for a student v doubt so these answers will be different so similarly the interrupt service routine for different different devices that will be different okay so you can see interrupt service routine for different different devices will be different so every device basically uh, will or, or i can say that cpu will execute isr for that device whenever that device will send the interrupt then cpu will execute the isr for that device corresponding to that device now let's see what this interrupt service routine we have already seen the analogy but let's see what this interrupt service routine what this simply means so remember interrupt service routine this is just a piece of code remember this is just a program whenever interrupt will come then cpu will execute this program to service the interrupt okay so this isr this is just a code remember this is just a program these are also instructions okay this is nothing fancy this isr is also a program okay remember this isr what is this isr this isr this is just a program remember this is just a program or i can say program which is executed by cpu which is executed by cpu okay when when interrupt occurs when interrupt occurs okay is this clear when interrupt occurs to service the interrupt we want to service the interrupt okay to service the interrupt the cpu will execute this program is this clear very simple point so remember what is isr isr is just a program which is executed by cpu when the interrupt will occur to service the interrupt okay so to service the interrupt we execute isr now one more thing different io devices they have different isr for example if the interrupt if the mouse is sending the interrupt then there will be different isr if keyboard is sending the interrupt then there will be different isr okay so remember different io devices will send the interrupt and for different io devices there is different isr so isr this is just a program which is executed by cpu when the interrupt will come to service the interrupt basically basically the purpose of isr that is to service the interrupt okay isr will service the interrupt so this is the idea is this clear one more thing this isr for all the io devices this is stored in the main memory okay this is already stored in the main memory this program this is already stored this is already stored in main memory in main memory for all interrupts for all interrupts of all io devices for all types of interrupts okay is this clear so very simple for all types of interrupts this interrupt service routine this program basically okay this is already stored in the main memory and remember again i am telling you that for different type of interrupts we have different isr okay for mouse there is different isr for keyboard there is different isr for hard drive there is different isr okay and for all the types of interrupts this isr this program will be stored in the main memory this is already stored in the main memory okay so what is this interrupt service routine the name is interrupt service routine we will call it isr the another name is interrupt handler the another name is interrupt service subroutine or iss so these are different different names for the same concept what is isr this is just a program to service the to service the interrupt okay isr this is just a program means these are instructions basically to handle a particular type of interrupt so what is this isr this is a special program remember this is a special function that will get executed in response to a interrupt signal whenever the interrupt signal will come then cpu will execute this isr this isr is just a special program which is executed whenever the interrupt signal will come to service the interrupt okay very simple so you can see each isr that is designed to handle a specific type of interrupt i told you that for different interrupt we have different isr 
and all these ISRs for all type of interrupts that is already resident in the main memory. Okay. For example, when the keyboard is sending interrupt signal, then what the CPU will do? CPU will execute the keyboard ISR. Yes or no? To service the keyboard interrupt, the CPU will execute the keyboard ISR. So you can see the keyboard ISR, this will handle the key press. Okay. Now the my mouse ISR, what it will do? Mouse ISR, this will update the position of the mouse on the screen. Okay. So let's understand these examples. Actually, I know that uh, these examples might not be clear. So let me explain some ISR. Okay. Let me give you for some different, different events, or I can say for some different, different IO devices, let me give you ISR. What actually is inside this ISR? I told you ISR is a program. ISR is instructions, which we execute to service the interrupt. Yes or no? Okay. For different type of interrupt, we have different, different ISR. Okay. So inside this ISR, basically what the CPU is doing, CPU is servicing the interrupt. CPU is servicing the particular type of interrupt. Now, let me give you some ISR for different, different IO devices. Okay. Then you will understand what actually this ISR is. Okay. Inside this ISR, what is there? You will understand when I will give you ISR of different, different IO devices. Okay. So let me start with mouse. Let's take the example of mouse. Okay. Let's assume you are doing the mouse movement. Now tell me in your computer, if you do the mouse movement, then what will happen? Then again, the interrupt signal will go to the CPU. Whenever you move the mouse, then what should happen? Just tell me one thing. If I move the mouse, okay. If I'm moving the mouse, then on your screen, what will happen? Can you tell me on your screen? What will happen? The mouse cursor will also move. Yes or no? See, if I'm moving the mouse, Let's assume this is the mouse. Now, if I'm moving the mouse, okay, then what will happen? Then on the screen, the cursor, the mouse cursor will also move. Yes or no? Agree. So very simple. When I move the mouse, then what will happen? Then the interrupt will go to the CPU. Okay. So when the mouse is moved, then it will generate an interrupt signal to the CPU. Okay. Now what the CPU will do? CPU will service this interrupt. This interrupt is coming from mouse. Now what the CPU will do? CPU will service this interrupt. Okay. So CPU, what it will do? CPU will execute the mouse interrupt service routine. Okay. Is this clear? What the CPU will do? CPU will execute the mouse interrupt service routine. Okay. This is mouse ISR. I can say, I can say this is mouse ISR. Okay. So CPU will execute this mouse interrupt service routine to service the interrupt of mouse. Okay. Can anyone tell me what will happen inside this? When you are moving the mouse, then interrupt will go to the CPU. Now what the CPU need to do? CPU need to execute this mouse interrupt service routine because the CPU need to service this interrupt, which is coming from the mouse. Can anyone tell me? Okay. Can you guess what will happen inside this ISR means what is this code inside this code? What will happen? Can you guess? Please tell me, can you make a guess? Just take a guess that whenever you are moving the mouse, the interrupt is going to the CPU. Now the CPU need to service this interrupt, which is coming from the mouse movement. Now, what now you tell me what action will be taken by the CPU? The CPU will execute mouse interrupt service routine. Now what will be happening inside this program in this ISR? What will be happening? Can anyone guess? See very easy. What will happen? First, we will find the coordinate of the mouse. Yes or no? First, we will find the coordinate of the mouse. Then what we will do? We will update the cursor position on the screen. Yes or no? Do you agree with me? What we will do? See, you are doing the mouse movement. So what we will do? We will find the coordinate of the mouse. Yes. A student is saying that inside this mouse SI ISR mouse interrupt service routine, what will happen? A student is saying that we will pixel change. Very good. Excellent pixel change. Okay. So let me, let me make it more clear. Basically what we will do. We will find the coordinate of the mouse. Where is the mouse? Okay. Then on the screen, we will update the cursor of the mouse. Okay. Yes or no. And then what we will do, then we will send an acknowledgement to the mouse that your interrupt has been serviced. Yes or no. So this is the three things we will do. See, very simple. Read this. These are common sense. Nothing else. These are common sense. Remember? So inside this mouse SI ISR, Inside this mouse interrupt service routine, inside this mouse interrupt service routine, what will happen? See, this is what will happen. We will get the mouse coordinate. Where is the mouse? Okay. What is the pixel position? 
horizontal, vertical. Basically, we will find the mouse coordinate, x-axis, y-axis. Okay, where is the mouse? So you can see we will find the mouse coordinate. The ISR will read the current mouse position. Then what we will do? We will update this on the screen. Yes or no? Update the cursor position on the screen. So the ISR will update the position of mouse cursor on the screen. Then what we will do? We will tell the mouse hardware. We will tell the mouse controller. Mouse also has a controller. Yes or no? Mouse also has a mouse interface. So we will tell the mouse hardware that the interrupt has been handled. Okay. Your interrupt has been serviced. So that's it. Is this point clear? So let's see. So remember, these are the steps you can see. Whenever you will move the mouse, then interrupt will go to the CPU. Now the CPU will service this interrupt. Yes or no? CPU will service this interrupt. So you can see mouse ISR. Inside this mouse ISR, what will happen? This is what will happen, remember? First you are moving the mouse. Then the interrupt will go to the CPU. Now what will happen? Now CPU will execute mouse ISR. This is, okay, read this. So now the CPU is executing mouse ISR. Okay, mouse ISR is invoked. Okay, now this, what the, who is doing this? CPU, CPU is doing this, remember. CPU is executing this ISR. This ISR, CPU is executing. So now what the CPU will do inside this mouse ISR? What the CPU will do? CPU will read the mouse new position. Okay, for example, horizontal, vertical, pixels. Yes or no? M move, moved five pixels to the right, two pixels to the down. Okay. And then this ISR will update the cursor position on the screen. And then it will tell the mouse that your interrupt has been serviced. Yes or no? That's it. Tell me, is this common sense or not? What is this ISR? Did you understand what happens inside the ISR? That is just a common sense. To service the interrupt, we execute a program. Whenever some interrupt will come, then CPU will execute a program to service that interrupt. Okay, yes or no? So remember for every type of interrupt, there is a different ISR. All these ISR for, for different, different interrupt, all these ISR, these are stored in the main memory. Okay, so very simple point. Now let's see another example that is battery low. Okay, ISR for battery low event. Again, let's assume you are using the laptop and if your battery is low, means let's assume that your battery is uh, below 10%. Then what will happen in your computer? If the battery is low, then what will happen? Then the battery controller will send an interrupt to the CPU that battery is low and laptop is about to shut down. Do you agree with me? Okay, so very simple. Remember when the laptop battery is very low or I can say below 10%, then the battery controller, okay, or I can say the battery interface, the battery module. So this battery controller, what it will do? It will send the interrupt to the CPU to warn the system that that battery is very low. Now what the CPU will do when this interrupt will go to the CPU, CPU will see, okay, battery is very low means battery controller is sending an interrupt. Okay. Battery controller is sending an interrupt. Now what the CPU will do? CPU will service this interrupt. Now to service this interrupt, CPU will again execute some program. This program will be called ISR for battery. Yes or no? This program will be called interrupt service routine for battery. Is this point clear? Please tell me. So remember very simple when this interrupt from the battery controller, when this interrupt will go to the CPU, then CPU need to service this interrupt to service this interrupt. CPU will execute a program. This program will be called interrupt service routine for battery low event. Okay. Very simple. So can anyone guess what will happen inside this interrupt service routine? Just take a guess means inside this interrupt service routine, what will happen? What the CPU will do? Think about your own computer in your computer. If the battery is very low, okay, less than 10%, then what the first thing that will happen? That will happen. Tell me the first thing that will happen inside this ISR. Remember what the CPU will do. CPU is servicing the interrupt. So in this interrupt service routine, the first thing that will happen is we will give a warning to the user. Yes or no. We will display the warning. Do you agree? Okay. So let's see this. The first thing that will happen, that is alert the user. On your screen, warning message will come. The morning, the warning message will be battery low. Please plug in the charger. This warning message will go to the user on the screen. Yes or no? After that, what will happen? After that, what the CPU will do after that? After that, in this ISR, in this interrupt service routine, remember the first thing is we will give a warning to the user. What the second thing? So the second thing is we will save the critical data. Yes or no? Whatever unsaved work you have, we will save it. 
we want to make sure that we do not lose the unsaved work. So what the CPU will do? CPU will save the unsaved work. Okay, the critical work CPU will save so that we do not have the data loss. Okay, so CPU will save the critical work. Then what will happen? Then CPU will CPU will turn on the power saving mode. Yes or no? CPU will turn on the power saving mode. This is what happens in your computer also. That computer, your laptop will turn on the power saving mode. So basically we will turn on the power saving mode so that we can extend the battery life. Okay. And at the end, what will happen? At the end, you can see at the end, what will happen? At the end, we will prepare for the shutdown. Yes or no? If the battery is still low, if the battery is still low, then what will happen? What we will do? We will do the safe shutdown. Do you agree this is what happens in your computer when battery is very low? Do you agree with these steps? Have you seen these steps happening inside your laptop whenever battery is very low? Step by step, first warning message will come. Okay, then critical data will be saved and then pow uh, uh, the power saving mode will be turned on and then safe shutdown will happen. Yes or no? So this is, this is the ISR interrupt service routine for battery low event. I hope you understood. Is this point clear? Please tell me. So did you understand what is ISR? Now did you understand if someone asks you what is ISR? What is this interrupt service routine? Can you explain? Please tell me. Can you explain this concept? What is ISR? So remember whenever interrupt will come to the CPU, then CPU need to service this interrupt. To service this interrupt, CPU will execute a program. This program will be called ISR for that interrupt. For different interrupt, we have different ISR. Okay. For different interrupt, there is different ISR. All these ISR, these are stored in the main memory. Okay, so ISR for mouse, ISR for keyboard, ISR for hard drive, okay, ISR for battery low. Basically, all these ISR for different, different interrupt, these are stored in the main memory. Okay, whenever some interrupt will come, then CPU will execute the ISR of that interrupt. Okay, and so whenever we are executing the ISR, then basically we can say that we are servicing the interrupt. Whatever interrupt has come, then we are servicing that interrupt. Okay. Is this clear? The last example you can see. This is the last example. Let's assume. Let's see the ISR. Let's see the ISR for data transfer from IO device to main memory. Let's assume your hard drive want to do some data transfer from hard drive to main memory. Then hard drive is sending an interrupt signal. Yes or no? So this is the interrupt service routine for data transfer from IO device to main memory. Okay. So let's see what will happen inside this ISR. ISR for data transfer. Okay. From IO device to main memory, let's assume we want to transfer 500 bytes. This is our target that we want to transfer 500 bytes from IO device to main memory. Then roughly this is what will happen. Okay. You don't have to worry about this code. You don't have to read this program. Basically roughly this will happen. What will happen? See, this is what will happen that this one byte, it will go to the CPU and from CPU, it will go to the main memory. Okay. So CPU will load the load this data cpu will load this data from the io device to the cpu register and then cpu will store this data to the main memory so roughly this is what will happen you can see that load will happen okay what the cpu will do cpu will load from the device cpu is loading a byte from the device then what the cpu is doing then cpu is storing the data cpu is storing the data in the main memory okay and then remember the count will be decreased initially the count is 500 because we want to transfer 500 bytes. So initially the count is 500. Now one byte is transferred. Okay. Here you can see one byte is transferred to the main memory. After transferring one byte to the main memory, what we will do? We will decrease the count. Okay. We will increase the address register. We will decrease the count. If the count is not zero, if the count is not zero, then we will send the next byte. Okay. Then the next byte will go to the CPU. CPU will load the next byte and then CPU will store the next byte. Okay. So overall, ultimately, this is what will happen. Is this clear? Please tell me the concept of ISR. Is that clear? So remember in the simple words, what is ISR? ISR is just a program or I can say instructions to handle an interrupt, to handle a particular type of interrupt. Okay. This ISR, this is a special program or I can say this is a special function which will get executed whenever some interrupt will come. Okay. ISR is already present in the main memory. Okay. And remember ISR is executed by the CPU. Okay. ISR is just like a normal program. Yes or no? Okay. CPU will execute a normal program. Similarly, CPU will execute the ISR. So ISR is executed by the CPU just like a normal program. 
ओके दिस इज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ आई एस आर आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड इज दिस क्लियर प्लीज टेल मी नाउ लेट्स स्टडी द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इंटरप्ट वैक्टर वॉट इज द कॉन्सेप्ट दिस इंटरप्ट वैक्टर ऑल्सो वॉट इज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इंटरप्ट वैक्टर टेबल ओके नाउ सी लेट मी टेल यू दैट I told you that CPU has an interrupt request pin. Yes or no? This is what I told you that CPU. What the CPU has? CPU has a pin. Okay, where interrupt request will come? INTR interrupt request. INTR R means request. R means request. Okay, so you can see CPU has a pin where interrupt request will come, and CPU has a pin uh, by which CPU will give the acknowledgement. Okay, is this clear? This A. This simply means acknowledgement. okay is this clear so very simple that cpu has two pins remember there is i intr there is one pin there is this pin intr where interrupt request will come okay interrupt request will come from the io device and there is another pin which is interrupt acknowledgement pin okay by which cpu will give the acknowledgement to the io device okay is this clear so remember this control signal will come from the io device and this control signal will go to the io device okay so you can see on this interrupt request pin the io module the io device will send the interrupt interrupt request and cpu will send the acknowledgement to the io device okay so this is the diagram you can see there is a cpu we have one pin there is a pin remember there is a hardware pin so there is a pin for interrupt request and there is pin for interrupt acknowledgement okay some io device can send interrupt request okay so this control line this is from io device to cpu and this acknowledgement will be sent by the cpu to the io device so you can see this pin or i can say this control line this is from cpu to the io device okay so you can easily see here that cpu has a interrupt request pin okay by which cpu will receive the interrupt request signals okay from the hardware or software i told you that hardware or software both they can send the interrupt to the cpu for attention okay so whenever the interrupt will come from the hardware or software that will indicate that that someone needs attention okay some event an event needs attention so this is the idea so this we already know now tell me the answer for this question i told you there is one pin yes or no cpu has one pin there is one interrupt request pin okay now just tell me one thing there is only one interrupt request pin and there is only one interrupt acknowledgement pin now you just tell me a simple point there are many io devices do you agree okay we have mouse there are many io devices we have mouse we have keyboard okay we have keyboard we have hard drive okay and there are many more for example battery okay there is battery so you, easily you can see there are many io devices but cpu has only one interrupt pin now you tell me whenever the interrupt will come let's assume this intr equal to 1 okay when intr is equal to 1 then cpu knows that there is interrupt someone has interrupted okay whenever intr equal to 1 then means interrupt occurs it simply means someone has interrupted okay yes or no it means someone interrupted it simply means someone interrupted now tell me how the cpu will know who interrupted can you tell me see cpu knows that someone interrupted but how the cpu will know who interrupted there are many io devices but there is only one interrupt request pin so this this interrupt may have come from any of them maybe keyboard has sent the interrupt maybe battery has sent the interrupt so now the cpu knows that okay on this pin intr equal to 1 cpu knows that someone interrupted but how to know whom but who but how to know who interrupted can you tell me the answer but how to find who interrupted can anyone tell me the answer remember it is very important to know who interrupted do you agree it is very important to know which device is interrupting because according to that we will we will execute the isr yes or no if mouse is interrupting then there is different isr if keyboard is interrupting there is different isr so it is very important to know who which device is interrupting so that we can execute the respective isr okay if battery is interrupting then we will execute the battery interrupt service routine okay so very simple it is very important to know who is interrupting so this is my question that whenever a device is interrupting how does the cpu know which device has interrupted 
and also how the CPU will know the location of the ISR because I told you ISR is in the main memory. Yes or no? Okay, in the main memory, this is, let's assume this is the main memory. In the main memory, we have ISR. Yes or no? Maybe this is the ISR for mouse. Is this clear? For example, maybe this is the ISR for mouse. For mouse interrupt. For mouse interrupt. Maybe this is the ISR for mouse interrupt. Yes or no? Maybe the location here, that is maybe 200. Okay, yes or no? So maybe the this is the ISR maybe for keyboard. Okay, is this clear? Maybe the location is 400. So maybe this is the ISR for battery. For battery interrupt. Okay, so this is what I'm asking that. How the CPU will know this address, this location of the ISR. So did you understand the question? Please tell me whenever a device will interrupt what the CPU will see. CPU will see that INTR equal to one means someone has interrupted. Yes or no? Because CPU has this INTR pin. Okay. There is interrupt request pin. So you can see whenever, whenever a device will interrupt, how the CPU will know who has interrupted and how, how to find the location of the ISR in the main memory. Okay, the location of the ISR which will handle the interrupt, how to know the location in the main memory. So can anyone suggest something, some, some mechanism, how you will do? Anyone? Tell me. How to know which device has interrupted, how to know? See, the answer is very simple. What we will do? We will give a unique number to every IO device. We will give a unique number to every interrupt. Do you agree? Yes or no? To every different type of interrupt, we will give a unique identification number. Okay, is this clear? Now, whenever interrupt will come, whenever this interrupt INTR pin will be one. So let's assume that every device, see the solution. I am explaining the solution now. The solution is this. The solution is that we will give a unique identification number to every interrupt. Or I can say to every IO device, we will give a unique identification number. Maybe for mouse, let's assume the number is zero. Okay, this number is zero. For keyboard, the number is one. For hard drive, the number is two. For battery, the number is maybe nine. Okay, maybe 10. Yes or no? Is this clear? Maybe the number is 10. So are you getting my point? What we will do? To every interrupt, to every type of interrupt, what we will do? We will give a unique identification number. Okay, if interrupt is coming from mouse, then remember mouse has this. This is called interrupt vector or I can say this is called interrupt number. So remember what this number is called? This number, this is called interrupt vector. This is called interrupt vector or I can call it interrupt number. So remember this number is called. So I am telling you that this number, this number is called interrupt vector. Interrupt number or interrupt vector. You can call it interrupt vector or you can call it interrupt number. Okay. Interrupt number. So is this point clear? Let me know. So very simple point. Remember whenever interrupt request has come. Okay. Whenever this INTR equal to one. Now CPU knows that someone has interrupted, but now CPU want to find out who has interrupted. Okay. So for that, what we will do, we will give unique identification number unique number we will give a very small number okay not a big number a very small number for example 0 1 2 like that okay so a unique number we will give, give to every interrupt to every type of interrupt we will give a unique number okay now what okay see i have given unique number to every type of interrupt this unique number is called interrupt vector or you can call it interrupt number okay both are same both these things are same so now what? Now what should be the next thing? Can anyone explain? Okay. Just by giving the number, can we find out who interrupted? Just by giving the number, now can we find out who interrupted? Still we cannot find out. Yes or no? Still we cannot find out. Now what the CPU will do? Let me tell you. Now the CPU will see that, okay, there is interrupt. Now let me tell you what will happen. The CPU will send the acknowledgement. Okay. The CPU will send the acknowledgement. This acknowledgement will go to all of them. Okay. The CPU will send the acknowledgement. INTA. Okay. I told you that there is a INTA. Correct. INTA. There is a pin INTA pin. So this CPU will send the acknowledgement. 
and when this acknowledgement will go now whichever device was interrupted interrupting for example let's assume that battery was interrupting so this interrupt is of battery okay so remember the cpu what it will do when the cpu will see that some interrupt has occurred means intr equal to 1 then cpu will send the inta interrupt acknowledgement this interrupt acknowledgement will go to all of them now whichever device interrupted for example let's assume battery interrupted this interrupt was from battery now what this is now this is the responsibility of the battery now the battery will send this unique number on the data bus to the cpu okay is this clear now what will happen this battery will send remember the battery will send this unique number this number 10 this number 10 will go to the will go to the cpu on the data bus okay this is the data bus this is the data bus did you understand what is happening see again i am telling you whenever some interrupt request will come there is only one intr pin interrupt request pin the cpu will see that okay intr equal to one means someone has interrupted now cpu want to find out who has interrupted okay now what will happen the cpu will send the interrupt acknowledgement the this interrupt acknowledgement will go to all these devices now whichever device has interrupted for example let's assume battery has interrupted now what the battery will do the battery will send this vector this interrupt vector or i can say this unique identification number this battery will send the unique this number on the data bus to the cpu now the cpu will get this number yes or no now what the cpu will do what the next step the next step is now the next step now the cpu has got this number yes or no this is the cpu now the cpu has got this number basically this interrupt vector the cpu has got yes or no interrupt number this interrupt number 10 the cpu has got this number now what the cpu will do let me tell you okay now what is our next task now cpu knows which device has interrupted okay yes or no it is clear now the cpu knows which device has interrupted now the cpu knows but still how the cpu will find the interrupt service address isr address where is the isr of this device how the cpu will find can anyone tell me did you understand my question see the cpu knows who has interrupted okay the cpu has found that okay battery is interrupting now now how the cpu will find the isr of battery okay because cpu needs to run the isr of battery and where is the isr of battery that is in the main memory okay in the main memory there is isr of battery this is the isr of battery okay let's assume this is at the location let's assume 800 okay so what is this this is isr of battery isr this is a battery isr okay now how to find this this location how to find this location this is my question cpu knows that battery has interrupted but now cpu need to execute this program this isr cpu need to execute yes or no this is the battery isr correct battery isr so cpu need to execute this battery isr but how the cpu will find this address of this isr so this is our question that now how cpu finds isr address okay battery isr address now how cpu finds battery isr address anyone want to suggest something now how the cpu will find the battery isr address see the answer is very simple there is an interrupt vector table okay there is an interrupt vector table see this number is called interrupt vector right correct this number this is called interrupt vector this number is called interrupt vector okay so, or you can call it interrupt number or you can call it interrupt number okay number so this number is called interrupt number or you can call it interrupt vector now let me tell you the concept there is a interrupt vector table in the main memory at a fixed position okay in the main memory in this main memory there in this main memory there is a interrupt vector table okay we have a interrupt vector table at a fixed position okay at a fixed position this is a fixed position maybe let's call it some position you can maybe at some address 8 
okay is this clear so there is a interrupt vector table this is i v t okay what is this this is interrupt vector table this is in the main memory remember at a fixed po position means cpu already knows at which position they we have interrupt vector table okay so this is interrupt vector table this is interrupt vector table in this interrupt vector table what happens for every interrupt okay in this interrupt vector table basically two things happen there are two things in this interrupt vector table what are those we have okay that for every vector number like for vector number 0 the address yes or no the address of here we will have address of this device isr of this device so remember here what we will put here we will put isr 0 address okay similarly for example here okay for this device what was this device in our example this device was keyboard yes or no this number is given to keyboard okay so remember okay for keyboard where is the interrupt service routine okay so this will be isr address isr1 okay basically where is the address so that address will be here means pointer or i can say the address here what we will have we will have address of isr1 okay is this point clear here we will put address of isr1 means isr of keyboard okay is this clear and so on and so on okay we will have what we will have we will have battery isr address also okay and so on here we will have battery isr address okay is this clear so here you have battery isr address okay is this point clear so now it is very simple now when the cpu will find okay that this is the device battery has interrupted now what the cpu will do cpu will consult this ivt interrupt vector table yes or no cpu will check this interrupt vector table and cpu will see for this interrupt number for this interrupt number what is the address of isr now you will find the address of the isr here we have address of isr yes or no isr of battery so here you will find the address of battery isr now you can go to the battery isr okay is this clear please tell me now you can go to the battery isr and you can execute the battery isr okay so this is the complete process did you understand please tell me so let me tell you step by step okay I told you that how the CPU will know which device has interrupted. Yes or no? Because there is only one interrupt request pin. We have only one interrupt request pin, but there are many IO devices. Now, whenever the interrupt will come, the CPU will see, okay, INTR equal to one means someone has interrupted, but who has interrupted? How to find out for that? What we do? We use the concept of vectored interrupts means means to every interrupt. We give a unique number that is called interrupt vector. Is this clear? So remember we will use the mechanism we will use the method of vectored interrupt means 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 that to every type of interrupt we will give a unique number okay so the basic idea let's see the basic idea is very simple to every device or i can say to every type of interrupt we will assign a small integer number we will assign a small integer number which is a unique number okay these are called interrupt numbers or these are called interrupt request numbers or these are called interrupt vector okay so very simple to every type of interrupt we give a unique number a small number we give a unique number we give this is called interrupt vector or you can say this is called interrupt number okay is this clear now what happens now let's see the next step so we have seen the definition of interrupt vector what is the interrupt vector interrupt vector that is basically that is the unique number that is the unique identifier which is assigned to every interrupt each type of interrupt is assigned a unique identifier okay a unique identify uh, a unique interrupt number so this is the point now let's see what will happen now we have seen the concept of ivt this interrupt vector table so this is a table remember this ivt what is this this is just a table okay this ivt is like this so let me explain this ivt this ivt is a table this is ivt interrupt vector table you can call it ivt interrupt vector table or you can call it IDT interrupt descriptor table. You can call it IVT or you can call it IDT means interrupt vector table or interrupt des descriptor table. In this table, basically what happens that in this we have two columns. Okay. You can think like this, that there are two columns. Okay. In, in the first column, we have interrupt number. Okay. Yes or no. In the first column, we have what are the unique interrupt vector or I can say interrupt number. 
here we have interrupt number and in the second column we have address of corresponding pointer to corresponding isr okay we have address of corresponding isr okay or i can say pointer to the corresponding isr pointer to respective isr respective isr okay is this clear so very simple for example uh, let's assume zero let's assume this zero is indicating mouse okay i am assuming let's assume that zero is assigned to mouse means if mouse is sending an interrupt then for the mouse interrupt we are giving this unique number this interrupt number that is zero let's assume this zero is mouse okay so remember here we will store what the address of what the address of isr so here we will store what we will store here here we will store this number whatever number i will put here for example let's assume let me put for example okay for 1028 okay 1029 whatever okay so let's assume this number what is this number remember this number is the this is the address of interrupt service routine for for mouse okay is this clear please tell me let me know did you understand this so remember this is the address of isr okay now at this address if you go remember at this address if you go if you go at this address now you will find the isr okay at this address you will find the mouse isr so this is the point okay so very simple one okay where is the interrupt service routine maybe the interrupt service routine at some position okay i am randomly writing remember i am randomly writing all these things so okay maybe okay and so on and so on so maybe two where is the interrupt service routine maybe the interrupt service routine is at okay so very simple like like this okay is this point clear what is the interrupt vector table and remember this interrupt vector table this resides in the main memory okay this table is present in the main memory at a fixed position okay so you can see that what is the interrupt vector table this interrupt vector table this is in the predefined area of the main memory i told you this ivt interrupt vector table this table is in the pre predefined fixed area of main memory and it will store the addresses of isr for each interrupt for every interrupt what is the address of isr this ivt this table will store okay very simple so you can see this ivt interrupt vector table this will store the address or i can say pointer to the interrupt service routine corresponding to each interrupt number okay now whenever some interrupt will occur then what will happen now cpu will, cpu will use this interrupt number to check this ivt to check this table and from this table the cpu will find the isr address okay is this clear cpu will find the isr address using the interrupt number so this is the concept i hope you understood okay is this clear now a very important thing i told you now let me tell you that whenever some interrupt will come what will happen what will happen some interrupt will come this is your cpu now whenever interrupt has come means intr equal to 1 let's assume intr equal to 1 now what will happen now cpu will send the acknowledgement do you agree okay what the cpu will do cpu will send the acknowledgement inta okay cpu will send the acknowledgement now this acknowledgement will go to all the devices now what the device will do tell me when the acknowledgement will go to all the devices now what the device will do this is acknowledgement okay so tell me when the acknowledgement will go to all the devices now what the device will do whichever device has interrupted for example let's assume battery has interrupted now this battery what it will do the battery controller what it will do it will put the unique number it will put the interrupt number on the data bus and it will send to the cpu okay so this is the point you can see here whenever a device will interrupt then device itself will send the vector number to the cpu on the data bus this is the idea is this point clear whenever the device whichever has whichever device is interrupting for example let's assume battery is interrupting so whenever a device is interrupting the device itself will send the vector number the interrupt number the unique identification number the device itself will send this number on the data bus to the processor okay now the processor what it will do it will find the vector number it will check the ivt interrupt vector table and it will find the address of the isr and then it will run the isr so this is a complete thing please tell me did you understand let me know let me know did you understand so here this diagram you can easily see look at this diagram okay let's assume there is a device 
this device is sending interrupt request okay now you can see the cpu what it will do it will send the acknowledgement okay so you can see now when this device will get this acknowledgement from the cpu then what this device will do this device will put this intr uh, sorry interrupt vector this interrupt number unique identification number this device will put this interrupt vector on the data bus and it will send to the cpu now cpu will get this number unique number okay cpu will get this number then cpu will check the ivt in the ivt cpu will find the address of the isr then cpu will execute the isr this is the complete thing please tell me did you explain uh, did you understand did you understand the concept of interrupt vector also interrupt vector table also this concept that this device itself will send the interrupt vector to the cpu on the data bus then cpu will find that the address of this interrupt service routine okay so you can see these are the steps you can read these the device controller will send the interrupt request to the cpu okay now the cpu will see that there is an interrupt request yes or no what the cpu will do cpu will finish the current instruction whatever cpu is see cpu is doing something so cpu will finish the current instruction then cpu will send the acknowledgement now what this device controller will do it will send the interrupt vector or i can say interrupt number on the data bus to the cpu cpu will read this interrupt number and cpu will identify the device okay you can also write that now once the cpu has found this interrupt vector now from ivt from interrupt vector table cpu will find what will find cpu will find address of isr yes or no address of corresponding isr whichever isr we need to execute we will find the address of that isr now what the cpu will do what do you think what will be the next next step now the cpu will execute this isr cpu will execute this interrupt service routine so that's it so this is the steps all the steps which are taken Please tell me, did you understand? So far, anyone has any doubt, let me know. Now we will study the next concept that is interrupt cycle. But I want to know, so far, did you understand the concept of interrupt in a crystal clear way? See, I'm telling you everything, what happens inside the computer whenever some interrupt will come, how the hardware, how the hardware will react, okay? Where to find the interrupt vector table, where to find the interrupt service routine address, I am explaining all the concepts very clearly. I am trying to explain. But please tell me, did you understand everything so far? Okay, see, we started with the definition of interrupt. What is the definition of interrupt? Interrupt is a signal by which any event, any software or any hardware can request the attention of the CPU. Yes or no? So basically, CPU has an interrupt pin, interrupt request pin. Now, Whenever the CPU will receive the interrupt request from IO device, then what the CPU will do? CPU will execute the interrupt service routine for that interrupt. Okay, for every interrupt, there is an interrupt service routine. So we have seen the concept of interrupt service routine that every every interrupt has an interrupt service routine. Whenever some interrupt will come, then CPU need to execute this interrupt service routine of the corresponding interrupt. Yes or no? Okay because we want to service the interrupt whenever an interrupt is coming then cpu need to service the interrupt and to service the interrupt uh, cpu is executing the isr of that corresponding interrupt okay so very simple all these points then we have seen what is interrupt vector or i can say vectored interrupt basically what we do to every to every type of interrupt we give a unique number okay this is called interrupt vector or you can say interrupt number so every io device or i can say every type of interrupt has a unique number and there is an interrupt vector table in the main memory Okay, so all these concepts, are they clear? Please tell me. Now let's understand the concept of interrupt cycle. Okay, see, we have already seen the basic instruction cycle. You, you already know that whenever CPU is executing a program, program means what? Program is a sequence of instructions, yes or no? In a program, we have sequence of instructions. So you can see, whenever CPU is executing a program, then overall this is the instruction cycle okay what the cpu will do cpu will face the instruction cpu will execute the instruction then cpu will face the next instruction cpu will execute that instruction okay cpu will face next instruction cpu will execute that instruction and so on so you can see this is the basic instruction cycle you can see we will start the execution of the program what we will do we will face the next instruction then we will execute the instruction yes or no okay at the end there is halt instruction 
okay then the program will stop yes or no so the execution will stop now this is the instruction execution cycle you can see okay this is the loop basically okay face next instruction execute then again face next instruction then execute again you face next instruction then execute and so on so this is the basic instruction cycle that we already know okay now in this instruction cycle where where are we checking for interrupt see in this instruction cycle we are continuously executing the instructions yes or no we are fetching executing fetching executing we are continuously executing the instructions okay now so where do we check the interrupt what do you think i am asking we are continuously executing the instructions okay one after one we are executing the instructions now where do we check the interrupt if there is a io device which wants this, which wants cpu attention okay then where the cpu will check for the interrupt i told you the cpu will check the interrupt after the execution of the current instruction yes or no so let's see this diagram i already told you that cpu will check for the interrupt after the execution of the current instruction okay this we have already seen remember the cpu will check for the interrupt basically cpu is checking is the interrupt request equal to 1 okay so remember cpu will check for the presence of interrupt after the execution of the current instruction okay whatever instruction cpu is executing cpu will complete it cpu will complete the execution of the current instruction after the execution of the current instruction what the cpu will do cpu will check for the interrupt means is there any interrupt cpu cpu will uh, cpu will check for the presence of the interrupt if there is no interrupt then no problem we will execute the next instruction yes or no if there is no interrupt then we will fetch the next instruction we will decode we will execute okay yes or no then again then again what we will do then again we will check for the interrupt okay so again if there is no interrupt then no problem we will fetch the next instruction decode execute then remember again what we will do again we will check for the interrupt now if there is interrupt now let's assume there is a interrupt then what we will do then we will jump to the interrupt service routine yes or no then we will save the work whatever work cpu is doing we will save the work and then we will execute the interrupt service routine after executing the interrupt service routine means after this interrupt service routine is over then what we will do we will resume the execution okay again what we will do we will face the next instruction decode execute so we will resume the execution of our program okay so this is the idea i hope you understood this idea is this clear so a very important point remember this is a very 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 important point that cpu will check for the interrupt after execution of instruction is this clear let me know cpu will check for the presence of the interrupt after executing the instruction means when this instruction is over then cpu will check is there interrupt and remember one more thing after executing every instruction means whenever any instruction will execute means after completing every instruction the cpu will check for the interrupt so you can see cpu is executing instruction i1 then checking for interrupt let's assume there is no interrupt no problem then cpu will execute instruction i2 then cpu will again check for interrupt okay now let's assume there is no interrupt again no problem cpu will execute the instruction i3 after executing the instruction i3 let's assume there is interrupt now if there is interrupt now what the cpu will do cpu will save the work then cpu will jump to the uh, this interrupt service routine and after executing this interrupt service routine cpu will resume the program execution what the cpu will do cpu will execute the instruction i4 cpu will fetch instruction i4 decode execute and then again cpu will check for the interrupt okay so remember cpu is checking for the interrupt presence cpu checking for the presence of interrupt after execution of every instruction when every instruction is over i uh, basically after every instruction after every instruction the cpu is checking for the interrupt let me know is this point clear okay one more thing it is possible that you can disable the interrupt yes or no let me tell you that it is possible we will see after some time we will see it is possible that cpu what it can do it can disable the interrupt pin okay it can disable the interrupt means means what it means the cpu is basically saying that okay i don't want any interrupt maybe maybe cpu is executing some very important program do you agree if cpu is executing some very important program very important program cpu is executing okay then at that point of time cpu does not want any interrupt yes or no so this is the point that whenever cpu is executing some very important program then what the cpu can do cpu can disable the interrupt if cpu has disabled the interrupt 
then CPU will not check for the interrupt, right? So you can easily see that this is the this is the diagram. In this diagram, you can see CPU will fetch the next instruction. CPU will execute the instruction. Now, if interrupts are disabled, if the CPU has already disabled the interrupts, if interrupts are disabled, then CPU will not check for the interrupt pin. CPU will not check for the interrupt. What the CPU will do? CPU will execute this this task. So interrupt disabled. You can think like this: that this is do not disturb mode. Yes or no? Do not DND mode of CPU. Do you agree? Yes or no? This is the DND mode of CPU. So if CPU has turned on the DND mode, do not disturb mode means CPU has disabled the interrupt. Now the CPU will not check for the interrupt after instructions. What the CPU will do? CPU will face the next instruction, execute. Okay, and then keep doing this. But remember, if interrupts are enabled, if CPU is not in the do not disturb mode, okay, if if interrupts are enabled, then what the CPU will do? CPU will check for the interrupt after every instruction. Okay, after execution of every instruction, the CPU will check for the interrupt. And if there is any interrupt, then CPU will CPU will process, CPU will service that interrupt. After servicing the interrupt, the CPU will resume the work. Okay, so this is the complete idea. I hope you understood. So you can see this is not when interrupts are not disabled. Read this. I am saying when interrupts are not disabled means when the CPU will allow the interrupt to occur. Okay. So when the interrupts are not disabled, then CPU checks for interrupt after execution of every instruction. Okay. After execution of every instruction, CPU will check for the interrupt. After execution of every instruction, CPU will check for the interrupt. If there is interrupt, then what the CPU will do? CPU will save this work. Whatever work, whatever program CPU is executing, CPU will save it. Then CPU will jump to the interrupt service routine and CPU will execute it. And then CPU will come back and CPU will resume the work. Whatever work CPU was doing, CPU will resume this work. So this is the idea. Okay. Now, let me tell you one thing. Tell me one thing. When IO device is sending the interrupt, will the IO device care uh, the CPU is at which phase? Can, tell me. See what I'm asking. I'm asking that whenever CPU is executing some instruction, let's assume this is the instruction. What the CPU will do? Overall, CPU will face the instruction. CPU will decode the instruction. CPU will execute. Then CPU will read the memory. CPU will write back. Okay, so these are the things which are involved in the execution of an instruction. During the instruction execution, these are the things that will happen. Okay, CPU is fetching the instruction, CPU is decoding, CPU is executing, reading the main memory and writing back to the registers or uh, writing back to the main memory. So you can easily see that this is what will happen during the instruction execution. Okay, during instruction execution, this is what happens during instruction execution. Correct? Yes or no? So let's assume I'm executing some instruction. Let's assume I6. So during the instruction execution of I6, these things will happen. Okay, we will fetch I6. We will decode I6. We will execute. Okay, and we will access the main memory and we will write back. Now, now tell me one thing. The interrupt can come anytime. Do you agree? The interrupt can come anytime. Yes or no? Maybe. See, when I'm decoding, during this decoding phase, the interrupt can come. Yes or no? From the IO device, Interrupt can come anytime. Interrupt can come anytime. Yes or no? Remember, interrupt can come anytime. That is fine. But CPU will check for the interrupt at the end only. Is this point clear? This is what I'm saying that interrupt can come anytime. Remember, see, interrupt can come here. Interrupt can come here. Interrupt can come here. Interrupt can come here. Interrupt can come anytime. But CPU will check for the interrupt at the end of the instruction execution. Okay, at the end of the current instruction execution, CPU will check for the interrupt. So interrupt can occur anytime, but CPU, but the interrupt will be acknowledged at the end of the current instruction execution. Is this point clear? They can ask you in the gate exam, they can ask you that interrupt, can interrupt occur only here? Can I say interrupt will come only at this point? Can I say interrupt will come to the CPU? See interrupt is coming to the CPU. Can I say interrupt will come only at this point? No, interrupt can come anytime. The IO device can send interrupt at any time. But remember the CPU, the CPU will acknowledge the interrupt or I can say CPU will check for the interrupt at the end of the current instruction execution. Okay, then CPU will acknowledge the interrupt. If there is interrupt, then CPU will do whatever CPU will do that you already know. Okay, now let's see interrupt processing. 
Now what we are going to see, we are going to see whenever the interrupt will come to the CPU, then what are the sequence, what are the steps taken by the CPU? Okay, so and this is very important for the gate exam. Many questions come from this interrupt processing. Basically our task, what is our task? Whenever some interrupt will come to the CPU, then what are the steps taken by the CPU one by one? Okay, what are the first step, then second step, third step, fourth step, fifth step and so on. Basically, what are the steps taken by the CPU? Steps taken by CPU in order, taken by CPU in this order, in this order. Okay, so this is very important for the gate exam. Whenever some interrupt is coming, then CPU, CPU will take some steps. Now, what are these steps taken by the CPU in this order? They can ask you this order also. Okay, so let's see this. See, overall idea, let me explain. Then I will tell you all the steps. The overall idea is like this. Let's assume CPU is doing some execution. CPU is executing a program. Let me call it program P. Okay, for a moment, let me call it program P. Okay, is this clear? So let's assume CPU is executing this program P. CPU is executing instruction 1, instruction 2 and so on. Now, when CPU is executing instruction I, during this instruction execution, let's assume interrupt has come. Okay, now will the CPU check Inst uh, this interrupt immediately tell me during the execution of instruction i during the execution let's assume interrupt has come interrupt has come now tell me when the when the interrupt will come will the cpu check for the interrupt immediately will the cpu check for the interrupt presence immediately no 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 cpu will execute this current instruction completely cpu will finish this current instruction after finishing this current instruction cpu will check for the interrupt Presence. Yes or no? CPU will check. CPU will check. Okay, that interrupt has occurred. CPU checking that interrupt has occurred. So you can see after executing the current instruction, the current instruction will be over. After the current instruction will be over, CPU will check that INTR equal to 1. It means someone has interrupted. Yes or no? It means someone has interrupted. Someone has interrupted. Okay, agree? Someone has interrupted. Now what the CPU will do? When CPU knows that someone has interrupted, now what the CPU will do? CPU will acknowledge this interrupt. Yes or no? CPU will send acknowledgement. CPU will send. Okay, what the CPU will do? CPU will send. Remember, now the CPU will send acknowledgement. Okay, is this clear? Now, after sending the acknowledgement, now the acknowledgement has gone. Now, after sending the interrupt acknowledgement, what the CPU will do? CPU will save this program. Whatever CPU is doing, CPU will save this program because remember, after some time, again, the CPU need to execute this remaining program. Yes or no? So remember, after some time, CPU will again come back. And after coming back, CPU will start from I plus one. Yes or no? So what CPU need to save? CPU need to save program counter because CPU need to start the resume. CPU need to resume the program execution from I plus one. So CPU will save the program counter. Also, CPU will save the registers also. Yes or no? Whatever registers are there, which are affected by this program. Okay, so those registers also CPU will save. Also, CPU will save the PSW program status word or I can say flag register. Yes or no? We have already seen this program status word or I can say flag register. So CPU need to save this flag register also because this program has affected the flags. Yes or no? Carry flag, zero flag. Okay, so this program has affected the flags. Now, those flags also we need to save because after some time we need to resume this program execution. Okay, so basically that is the reason. So what the CPU will do? Remember CPU after sending the acknowledgement, CPU will send the acknowledgement. Now the acknowledgement has gone to the IO devices, to all the devices, the acknowledgement has gone. Now the CPU will save this program. CPU will save the program counter. CPU will save the registers. CPU will save the PSW or I can say flag registers. So these things CPU will save. Now after this, what will happen? After this, what will happen? Let me tell you. See, CPU already sent the acknowledgement. So when the CPU sent the acknowledgement, then IO device which has interrupted, that IO device will send the interrupt vector. Do you agree? Yes or no? I already told you. Yes or no? Remember, CPU is sending the acknowledgement. Then CPU is saving this program. Then this IO device, what this IO device will do? This IO device will send the interrupt vector. This IO device will send the interrupt vector to the CPU. Yes or no? On the data bus, on the data bus, this IO device will send the interrupt vector to the CPU. Now the CPU knows which device has interrupted. Yes or no? Now what the CPU will do? Now CPU will check for the IVT interrupt vector table. In the interrupt vector table, CPU will find the address of the ISR. 
so when the cpu will find the address of the isr yes or no the cpu what it will do it will find the address of the isr this is the isr and let's assume the address is 200 so you can see the cpu will check the ivt interrupt vector table in this interrupt vector table cpu will find this address 200 now what the cpu will do now the cpu will execute this isr but remember to execute this isr this is also a program this is also a program so what the cpu will do to execute this isr what the cpu will do when the cpu will find this 200 in the interrupt vector table when the cpu will find this 200 then cpu will load this in the program counter okay cpu will load this 200 in the program counter is this clear now when the cpu will load this 200 means address of the isr cpu will load in the program counter now the cpu will execute this isr okay is this clear now after executing this isr what will happen after this isr is over now what will happen now the cpu will restore this program i told you that cpu has already stored this program right cpu has already saved this program now cpu what it will do it will restore this program and it will resume the execution that's it these are the steps in the interrupt processing did you understand one by one please tell me in a very crystal clear way did you understand the steps during the interrupt processing so tell me what is the first step tell me quickly what is the first step first step is that a cpu will execute the current instruction yes or no whenever the interrupt will come whenever the interrupt will come cpu will execute the current instruction after executing the current instruction cpu will check for the interrupt if there is interrupt then what the cpu will do cpu will send the acknowledgement after sending the acknowledgement cpu will save this work whatever work cpu is doing cpu will save this work cpu will save program counter registers also the flag register so cpu will save this work okay now at this time the io device the io device will send the interrupt vector to the cpu okay the io device which is interrupting that io device will send the interrupt vector to the cpu now the cpu will check the ivt in the interrupt vector table cpu will find the address of the this address of this interrupt service routine now what the cpu will do cpu will load this address in the program counter and cpu will execute this interrupt service routine after executing this interrupt service routine the cpu will restore this program and cpu will execute this program okay is this clear in a very crystal clear way please tell me let's see all the steps one by one now now let me tell you all the steps one by one interrupt processing in detail what is the first step the first step is io device will send the interrupt to the processor io device is sending interrupt signal to the processor what it means io device is sending interrupt signal to the processor what it means what it means it means intr equal to 1 yes or no this intr pin this will become 1 okay correct so intr will become 1 now what the second thing the second thing processor will finish the execution of the current instruction first processor will finish the execution of the current instruction before checking the interrupt before responding to the interrupt this processor what it will do it will finish the execution of the current instruction now after the execution of the current instruction cpu will check for the interrupt is there any interrupt yes there is interrupt yes there is interrupt irq equal to one okay yes there is interrupt now what the cpu will do let's see the next step now what the third step the third step is the processor will check for the interrupt if there is interrupt if there is interrupt now what the cpu will do cpu will send acknowledgement yes or no if there is interrupt then cpu will send the acknowledgement to the io device okay so very simple that uh, cpu will send the acknowledgement to the io device that has sent that has issued the interrupt okay now after this acknowledgement has gone what the what the interrupt what this interrupting device will do this interrupting device will make intr signal equal to zero okay this signal will allow the device to remove the interrupt signal because already acknowledgement has gone yes or no cpu has already sent the acknowledgement to the io device okay so now what this io device will do this io device will remove the interrupt request okay because already the acknowledgement has come so the interrupting device this interrupting io device it will remove the interrupt signal okay now what is the fourth step the fourth step see now let me tell you that when acknowledgement will go to the device controller what this device controller will do see this is i can say this is the i can say this is between third three comma four between three comma four this is what will happen 
स्टेप थ्री कोमा फोर आई विल टेल यू वॉट इज स्टेप फोर बट बिटवीन स्टेप थ्री कोमा फोर दिस विल हैपन वॉट विल हैपन सी दिस आई दिस डिवाइस हैज सेंट इंटरप्ट टू द सी पी यू ओके द सी पी यू विल एग्जीक्यूट द करंट इंस्ट्रक्शन आफ्टर एग्जीक्यूटिंग द करंट इंस्ट्रक्शन वॉट द सी पी विल डू सी पी विल चेक इज देर इंटरप्ट यस देर इज इंटरप्ट सो वॉट द सी पी विल डू सी पी विल सेंड द एक्नोलेजमेंट दिस एक्नोलेजमेंट विल गो टू द डिवाइस वॉट दिस डिवाइस विल डू दिस डिवाइस विल रिमूव द रिक्वेस्ट यस ओ नो नाउ दिस डिवाइस विल रिमूव द रिक्वेस्ट नाउ द एक्नोलेजमेंट हैज ऑलरेडी कम यस ओ नो सो नाउ वॉट दिस डिवाइस विल डू दिस डिवाइस विल पुट द इंटरप्ट वैक्टर द इंटरप्ट नंबर यू नो द यूनिक नंबर फॉर दिस इंटरप्ट सो दिस यूनिक नंबर दिस यूनिक आइडेंटिफिकेशन नंबर दिस इंटरप्ट वैक्टर दिस डिवाइस कंट्रोलर विल पुट ऑन द डेटा बस ओके दिस नंबर विल गो टू द सी पी यू सी पी यू विल टेक दिस नंबर सी पी यू विल चेक आई वी टी ओके इन द आई वी टी सी पी यू विल फाइंड द एड्रेस ऑफ आई एस आर यस ओ नो द सी पी यू विल फाइंड द एड्रेस ऑफ आई एस आर दिस इज वॉट द सी पी यू विल फाइंड ओके इज दिस क्लियर नाउ सी पी यू हैज फाउंड द एड्रेस ऑफ आई एस आर नाउ सी पी यू नोज वॉट द एड्रेस ऑफ आई एस आर नाउ वॉट द नेक्स्ट स्टेप सी पी यू नोज द एड्रेस ऑफ आई एस आर नाउ वॉट द नेक्स्ट स्टेप नाउ द नेक्स्ट स्टेप यू कैन इजिली सी वॉट द सी पी यू विल डू आई टोल्ड यू द सी पी यू विल सेव द वर्क ये सोनो सी पी यू विल सेव द वर्क ओके सो रिमेंबर द इन्फॉर्मेशन सी पी यू विल सेव द इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द करंट प्रोग्राम सी पी यू विल सेव ओके वॉट सी पी यू विल सेव सी पी यू विल सेव प्रोग्राम काउंटर सी पी यू विल सेव पी एस डब्ल्यू पी एस डब्ल्यू मीन्स रिमेंबर पी एस डब्ल्यू प्रोग्राम स्टेटस वर्ड दैट सिंपली मीन्स फ्लैग रजिस्टर ओके ये सोनो सो वॉट द सी पी यू विल डू रिमेंबर सी पी यू विल सेव द प्रोग्राम काउंटर सी पी यू विल सेव द प्रोग्राम स्टेटस वर्ड और आई कैन से फ्लैग रजिस्टर दीज थिंग सी पी यू विल सेव सो दैट आफ्टर सम टाइम वी कैन रिज्यूम ओके आफ्टर सम टाइम वी कैन रिज्यूम दिस प्रोग्राम सो दैट सो फॉर दैट रिमेंबर द सी पी यू विल सेव दिस करंट प्रोग्राम ओके नाउ वॉट द फिफ्थ स्टेप द फिफ्थ स्टेप इज दिस इज द फिफ्थ स्टेप द सी पी यू विल लोड द प्रोग्राम काउंटर विद द इंटरप्ट हैंडलर एड्रेस ये सो नो आई टोल्ड यू दैट सी पी यू हैज this processor cpu has address of isr so this processor what it will do it will load the program counter with the address of isr with the address of isr cpu will load the program counter with this address and then then now what will happen now the isr will execute okay is this clear okay now stop see just think about it now whatever we will do that will happen inside the isr isr is a program do you agree okay see in this fifth step in this fifth step what cpu has done cpu has loaded the program counter with the address of isr do you agree now the program counter has the address of isr now cpu is ready to execute the isr okay is this clear now cpu will execute the isr now remember whatever cpu will do now that will now now all the uh, now all the following steps step number 6 step number 7 step number 8 now all the following steps these are happening inside the isr so isr is a software or hardware tell me isr interrupt service routine that is a program or hardware that is a program that is a software yes or no now remember now all the steps step number 6 step number 7 step number 8 all these steps these will happen inside the isr means now isr is executing so remember now all the steps they will happen in the software software means isr now all the following steps that i will tell you those steps will happen inside the isr means inside the software so far everything was happening happening in the hardware so far everything was happening by the hardware or in the hardware but now isr will run now the cpu will run the interrupt service routine so now 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 cpu will run the isr program means software so all the following steps will be done by the software as part of isr okay now let's see the next step what the step number 6 let's see the step number 6 now remember all these things are happening inside the isr please understand this is your isr all these things are happening inside isr all these things are happening inside isr means isr means software so all the following things are happening inside the software what will happen the step number 6 what is that that is the interrupt handler okay remember inside the isr also maybe some some more information we will save okay maybe some more information we need to save okay so that also we will save as part of isr remember okay now all the things will happen inside the isr now isr is executing okay so remember inside the isr maybe some more information we will save maybe 
some other information we can save. So remember the ISR interrupt handler means ISR. Interrupt handler means ISR. So this ISR can save some other information also. Okay. Now after saving some other information also, what the ISR will do? It will execute. Okay. It will basically it will do the interrupt processing. It will service the interrupt. Basically, it will service the interrupt. After servicing the interrupt, after servicing the interrupt, what it will do? What the ISR will do? After servicing the interrupt, the ISR will restore the program. Okay, whatever was the program, right? Some program we were executing, which we have already saved. Now, see what this ISR will do. It will restore that program. Okay, it will restore that program. Okay, it will restore program counter PSW of the interrupted program. Okay, so that will be restored and the program execution will begin. Program execution will resume. So this is the step six, seven, eight, nine. Step six, seven, eight, nine. These are happening inside the ISR. These are happening inside the software. This is happening as part of ISR. Is this clear? You can think that this is what is happening inside the ISR. So remember, in the ISR, in the interrupt service routine, we can save some more information. Then we will service the interrupt. After servicing the interrupt, we will restore the program. Our program which we have already saved, our interrupted program that we will restore. We will restore the program counter, PSW, registers, all these things we will restore. And then we will resume our interrupted program. That's it. Okay. Is this clear? A student is asking what is PSW? That is program status word. That is program status word. We have already seen this in our lectures in the flag register. This is basically your flag register. Have you watched that lecture? Let me know. A student is asking what is PSW? Did you watch our lecture in our go classes lecture? We have already seen what is PSW. That is a program status word. That is basically your flag register. There are some flags, zero flag, sign flag, parity flag and so on. Okay. There are some flags. These are affected by the instructions. Okay. So whenever a program is executing, then the instructions, they can, they can affect these flags. Okay. So these flags, they have basically the information they have, they store some crucial, important information. So this PSW also we need to store because we want to resume this program. Yes or no. After coming back from the ISR, we want to resume this program. So we need to save this flag register also. Okay. Is this point clear? Let me know. Vishal, is your doubt clear? We have already seen what is PSW. What is this flag register in our lecture? We have already seen. You can watch it. Okay. So all these steps, are they clear? Are they crystal clear? All the steps. Okay. So let me again tell you, because this is important. Interrupt processing. In the interrupt processing, remember, these things will happen by the hardware. These things will be done by the hardware and these things will be done by the software. I already told you that these things are part of ISR. Okay. All these things are part. These are happening inside the ISR. These are happening inside ISR. Inside ISR. Interrupt service routine. Interrupt handler. So remember, whenever interrupt will come, then there is a sequence of steps. Yes or no? There is a sequence of steps. Now, these things, okay, all these activities will happen, will be done by the hardware. And all these activities will happen inside the ISR, which is a program. ISR is a program. So I can say, that all these things will happen will be done by the software. Okay. Now let's see what are the, what are the steps? So let's see one by one. So you can see the device will generate the interrupt. Okay. This is the first step. The device controller, the IO device will issue the interrupt signal. Okay. What the CPU will do? CPU will finish the execution of the current instruction. After finishing the execution of the current instruction, what the CPU will check? CPU will check. Is there interrupt? Ye Yes, there is interrupt. If there is interrupt, then CPU will acknowledge the interrupt. Okay. CPU will acknowledge the interrupt. Now, after acknowledging the interrupt, what the CPU will do? CPU will push the CPU will save the program basically. Okay. Whatever current program CPU will save. Okay. What the CPU will do? CPU will save the program counter. CPU will save the registers. CPU will save the program status word. That means flag register. So CPU will save the current program information. Okay. Current program information CPU will save in the stake. Okay. In the system stake. So CPU will save the current program information in the stake. Now at this point, what will happen? Let me tell you between these two. Okay. At this point, what will happen? This IO device will send the vector to the CPU. I told you yes or no. 
when the acknowledgement will go to the IO device, see CPU is sending the acknowledgement to the IO device. Now the IO device will send the interrupt vector number to the CPU. CPU will find this interrupt vector number and CPU will check the interrupt vector table. In the interrupt vector table, CPU will find the address of the ISR, address of the interrupt service routine CPU will find, yes or no? So this is what I am saying that at this point, okay, at this point, CPU has the address of the ISR, okay? Just assume that here, CPU knows the address of the ISR, CPU knows, okay? Here, remember, CPU knows ISR address. CPU knows ISR address. Is this clear? CPU knows ISR address. Now, because CPU knows ISR address and CPU has already saved the current work, the current program information CPU has already saved on the stake. Now what the CPU will do? CPU will load the PC program counter with the ISR address. Yes or no? CPU will load program counter with the ISR address. Now what will happen? Now ISR will execute. Okay, this is what I'm telling you. This is important that now the ISR will execute. So remember, everything that will happen now, that will happen inside the ISR. Now ISR is executing. So what the ISR will do? Okay, now what the ISR will do? Remember, CPU is executing the ISR. CPU is executing the ISR. Means all these things will happen inside the ISR. So I can say CPU is doing or I can say ISR is doing. But ultimately, these are the things that are happening inside the interrupt service routine. What will happen? This ISR can save some more information about the process. Okay, this ISR, this can save some more information that we need to save maybe. Okay, so some more information this ISR can save. Now the now the ISR will service the interrupt. Yes or no? It will service the interrupt. Then what it will do? It will restore the program. Okay, it will restore the program. It will restore the old PSW and old, old program counter value and then it will resume the program execution. The interrupted program execution will resume. Okay, is this clear? So that's it. These are the steps. So you can see these steps. Okay, these are the things done by the hardware and these are the things that are happening inside the ISR. Okay, so remember, this is what is happening inside ISR. This is happening inside ISR. ISR is a program, remember, ISR is just a program. So these things are happening inside this program. Okay, so you can see what the hardware will do. Let's see this quickly. Device controller will send the interrupt. Device controller or some other hardware or software can send the interrupt. Okay, what the processor will do? Processor will finish the current execution. Okay, after finishing the current execution, what the processor will do? Processor will check for the interrupt. If there is interrupt, processor will check for the interrupt. If there is interrupt, then what the processor will do? Processor will send the acknowledgement. Processor will signal the acknowledgement. Yes or no? Then what the processor will do? Processor will save the current work. Processor will save current work means processor will save program counter. Also this PSW means flag registers this program status word. So processor will save the information related to the interrupted program. Okay, whatever current program processor is executing. So processor will save the information related to that program. Then what the processor will do? Then processor will load the PC with the interrupt service routine address. Yes or no? Okay, this CPU, CPU will load the program counter with the address of the ISR. Okay, now, now what will happen? Now the ISR will execute. Okay, because now, now CPU is executing the ISR. So now the ISR will execute. What the ISR will do? ISR can save some more information. Some more important information ISR can save in the stake. Okay, in the stake, ISR can save some more information. Then ISR will service the interrupt. Whatever interrupt has come, ISR will service that interrupt. Okay, then ISR will restore the process. Okay, whatever was the interrupted program, that interrupted program will be restored by the ISR. So you can see ISR will restore the old program counter, old flag register, old registers, all these things, basically the old program information, this ISR will restore. Okay. And then, then, then we can resume the execution. Then we can resume the execution of the interrupted program because this was the interrupted program. So now we can resume the execution of the interrupted program. Okay. So this is what is happening. One thing I want to ask you here, one thing I want to ask you here, how the CPU will know the address of ISR? Tell me, see how the CPU will know the address of ISR that I told you what will happen when the CPU is sending acknowledgement, then the device will send the 
interrupt vector to the CPU on the data bus. The CPU will find the interrupt vector, the interrupt number, and then CPU will check the IVT interrupt vector table. In the interrupt vector table, CPU will find the address of the ISR. So this is what will happen here. Okay, this is what will happen here. This is what will happen. This whole thing will happen here. Now the CPU, now the CPU will have the address of the ISR. Okay, and that address of ISR, CPU will put in the program counter and then ISR will execute. Okay, so that's it. These are the steps. In a very detailed way, I have told you all the steps. Please tell me, did you understand? These are very important. Many gate questions have come from this interrupt processing sequence. What are the sequence whenever interrupt occurs? Then what CPU will do step by step, what CPU will do that we have seen in a very detailed way. Please tell me, did you understand? Let me know. Is there any confusion, any doubt, anything? I told you how the CPU will find the address of ISR. Yes or no? That also I told you. I told you what will happen step by step. In a sequence, what will happen? That also I told you. I told you that some steps will be done by the hardware and some steps will be done by the ISR, interrupt service routine. Okay, so I can say some steps will be done by the hardware and some steps will be done by the software. Okay, yes or no? Once you once the PC, CPU, when the CPU will load the ISR address in the program counter, now the ISR will execute. Okay, now everything will happen inside the ISR. Inside the ISR, we will save some more information about the process. We can save some more information. We can service the interrupt. Then we can restore the interrupted program. Okay, now ISR will be over. Okay, now once the ISR is over, now what the CPU will do? CPU will resume the execution of the interrupted program. That's it. Please tell me. All the concepts, are they clear? Let me know. So you can see whenever the interrupt will occur, there are various things that need to be done whenever interrupt will be received. Okay. So what we need to do first, we finish the execute first, we finish executing the current instruction. Then we recognize the interrupt means which device, which IO device has interrupted. Okay. So we recognize the interrupt. We determine the address of the ISR. Okay. We determine the address of the ISR. Now what we do? We save all the data related to the current program. We save all the data. Remember, we save all the CPU registers like program counter registers, status word, flag register. So basically these things we save in the stack memory in the stack. Okay. We save in the stack. Basically the stack memory is used. You can see here the stack memory is used. Then what we do after saving the current program, after saving the current program, what we do, we jump to the ISR, we execute ISR and then we return. Okay. And then what we do, then we resume our interrupted program. Okay. We resume our interrupted program. Very simple. So we continue with our original program as if nothing had happened. So that's it. All the concepts, are they clear? Now, are you ready to solve some gate questions based on this concept? Let's solve this gate 1987 question. The same question has come in ISRO 2009. The same question has come in UGC NET December 2011. So this gate 1987 question, this has come three times. This has come in ISRO also. This has come in UGC NET also. So tell me the answer for this question. On receiving an interrupt from an IO device, what the CPU will do? When the CPU will receive interrupt from an IO device, what the CPU will do? Let's read this. What the CPU will do? CPU will halt for a predetermined time. No. CPU will halt. No. CPU will not halt. Yes or no? What the CPU will do? Read the last line. CPU will branch off to the interrupt service routine after completion of the current instruction. Yes or no? See, very simple. When the CPU will receive the interrupt from IO device, then what the CPU will do? CPU will co co complete the current instruction. CPU will complete the current instruction. After that, CPU will branch off to interrupt service routine. Yes or no? CPU will jump to the interrupt service routine. Then CPU will execute this interrupt service routine and then CPU will resume the previous program. Okay. So you can see the answer will be option D. Is this point clear? Option C is not the answer. Read option C. Branch off to ISR immediately. Will it happen? CPU, will the CPU jump to the ISR immediately? No. CPU will first finish the current instruction. Okay. Yes or no? Whatever instruction CPU is executing, CPU will complete the current instruction execution 
after that cpu will check is there any interrupt if there is any interrupt then cpu will jump to the interrupt service routine okay so for this question answer will be option d okay so for this ugc net question what will be the answer for this ugc net question answer will be option b branch off to isr after completion of current instruction okay for this isro question what will be the answer branch off to isr after completion of the current instruction so answer will be option b for this isro okay so for this gate question answer will be option d we will jump to the isr after completion of the current instruction let's solve this gate 2009 question this same question has come in ugc net also a cpu generally handles an interrupt by executing an interrupt service routine isr tell me when read the options and tell me the answer a cpu generally handles an interrupt by executing the isr by executing the isr as soon as interrupt is raised no yes or no first the cpu will complete the current instruction yes or no so very simple option c is correct read option c by checking the interrupt register or i can say by checking the interrupt pin okay see either we can use the interrupt pin or we can use the interrupt register so by checking the interrupt pin after finishing the execution of current instruction okay after finishing the execution of current instruction the cpu will check the interrupt pin if there is interrupt then the cpu will jump to the isr for that interrupt so the answer will be option c what is the answer for this ugc net question ugc net 2015 question this question is basically similar or i can say exactly same as this question you can see this gate 2009 question a cpu handles interrupt by executing interrupt service routine the answer is yes answer is option a by checking interrupt after execution of each instruction yes or no after execution of the current instruction or i can say after instruction of ex after execution of each instruction that you already know see after execution of each instruction we will check is there interrupt after execution of each instruction we will check is there interrupt okay so that you already know because see this look at this diagram look at this diagram after execution of each instruction the cpu will check is there any interrupt if there is interrupt if there is interrupt then the cpu will jump to the interrupt service routine so you can see that after execution of each instruction okay after execution of every instruction the cpu will check for the interrupt if there is interrupt then cpu will jump to the interrupt service routine so the answer will be option a by checking interrupt after execution of each instruction option a is correct let's solve this gate 2018 question this is a beautiful question the question is asking that in which order the events will occur when the cpu will receive a interrupt what are the order of the events basically okay see read the question the following are the events that will occur after a device controller sends interrupt to the processor when the process l is already under execution means what it means it means that cpu is already executing cpu is already executing process l there is a process l this is the process l process or program so basically cpu is already executing this program l and the there is a device controller that is sending a interrupt that is sending a interrupt okay is this clear so very simple now when this device when this io device controller when this will send the interrupt during the execution of this program l now some events will happen in which order they will happen the question is asking what the correct order in which these events will occur what the correct order okay so this is what the question is asking so tell me the answer what the correct order see this is the correct order we have already seen in our lecture so you can easily see what will happen first you can see the device controller is sending the interrupt yes or no this device controller this is sending the interrupt to the cpu what the cpu will do cpu will finish the current instruction okay cpu will finish the execution of the current instruction then cpu will check is there any interrupt if there is interrupt then cpu will acknowledge the interrupt then cpu will save the current work okay the current process information the current process program counter registers 
flag register program status word basically all these things cpu will save on the stack okay cpu is saving the current process information okay that uh, that cpu is saving on the stack then what the cpu doing then cpu is loading the program counter with the isr address yes or no cpu will load the program counter with the address of isr now isr will execute okay now what will happen now isr is executing what this isr will do isr can save some more information in the stack some more important information this isr can save in the stack then isr will service the interrupt then it will restore the interrupted program okay this interrupted program this interrupted program means this program l so this isr what it will do it will restore the program l and then we will resume the execution of program l okay we will resume execution of the program l very simple so these are the steps now tell me the answer let me know read so you can see these are the steps read every statement p is saying the processor pushes the pro process status on the control stack q is saying the processor will finish the execution of the current instruction r is saying the processor executes the interrupt service routine s is saying the processor will pop the process status of l from the control stack t is saying the processor will load the new program counter based on the interrupt okay so what is the correct order very simple first q must happen do you agree yes or no first q must happen that first the cpu will execute will finish the execution of the current instruction yes or no agree with me so first q will happen first q will happen cpu will finish the execution of the current instruction okay after finishing the current instruction cpu will check is there interrupt if there is interrupt then cpu will acknowledge the interrupt then what the cpu will do cpu will save the information do you agree with me yes or no so first q will happen then what the cpu will do cpu will save the information cpu will save the information means this process l information related to process l that will be saved on the stack yes or no so you can see the processor will push the process status on the stack yes this will happen correct do you agree with me so very simple first the processor will execute the current instruction after finishing the current instruction the cpu will check is there interrupt yes there is interrupt if there is interrupt then cpu will acknowledge the interrupt and what the cpu will do cpu will save the current info current process information cpu will save the information related to the current program on the stack or on the system stack or on the control stack so p will happen after that what will happen now cpu will load the isr address in the program counter yes or no is this clear now cpu will load remember now cpu will load so you can easily see here now cpu will load after saving the information related to current program okay the cpu will load the new uh, the isr address in the program counter yes or no so very simple this t will happen the processor will load the program counter value based on the interrupt basically in the program counter the processor will put the isr address okay this is what will happen in the step t okay after that what will happen after that cpu will execute the isr very simple yes or no after that cpu will execute the isr and after that at the end what cpu will do cpu will restore the process l yes or no cpu will restore the process l basically cpu will take this process l from the stack and it will restore okay so that it can resume the execution of process l so these are the this is the sequence so the answer will be qptrs qptrs answer will be option a okay is this point clear one more thing notice one more thing in the gate exam what you can do see it is very simple in the gate exam you can notice that this will definitely happen first that cpu will execute the current instruction yes or no cpu will finish the execution of the current instruction definitely this will happen first okay so which options are gone q will happen first that you already know that q will happen first so which options are gone option b c are gone option b gone option c gone okay now only two options are remaining remember only two options remaining one is q p t r s another is q t p r s okay now you can just see whether p will happen first or t will happen first okay see t is saying that we will load pc with the isr address okay and and uh, and p is saying that we will push the current process information on the stack so definitely this will happen before executing isr 
बिफोर लोडिंग द प्रोग्राम काउंटर विद द आई एस आर एड्रेस वॉट वी नीड टू डू वी नीड टू सेव द इन्फॉर्मेशन रिलेटेड टू द करंट प्रोग्राम ऑन द स्टेक ओके ये सोनो सो पी विल हैपन फर्स्ट ये सोनो सो वेरी सिंपल सो द आंसर विल बी ऑप्शन ए ओके सो दिस इज अ वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड दिस इज द सिक्वेंस क्यू पी टी आर एस दिस इज गेट टू थाउजेंड एटीन क्वेश्चन सो दीज आर द स्टेप्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन now our topic is multiple interrupts how to handle multiple interrupts this is our next topic this we will continue in the next session in the next lecture we will study when multiple interrupts will occur simultaneously then how the cpu will handle so this we need to study also we will study nested interrupts and also we will study the types of interrupts okay and we will solve each and every gate Gate previous year question in the next session. Okay, each and every gate question related to interrupt we will solve in the next session. Okay, thank you everyone. Please share your feedback in the comments. Please like the session. Please put your feedback in the comments. Please let us know. Did you understand everything in this session in a very crystal clear way? How things are happening? In which sequence things are happening? Okay, so please tell me. Did you understand like interrupt service routine? Who how the CPU will know which which device has interrupted what is interrupt vector vectored interrupts the concept of vectored interrupts okay so and what are the sequence when the interrupt will occur then what are the, what are the step by step sequence in which the interrupt processing will happen so all the concepts we have seen i hope you understood okay so thank you so much everyone in the next session we will continue